Before starting, I will just say, like always, we are recording this encounter for the archive, just to have them to go back. And uh, I will start now, if it's okay, everyone ready? Hello, everyone. Welcome to the opening plenary session. We're going to start this plenary with the summoning of the parliament, the Urban Rights European Parliament. The session will be conducted by Luiso, myself. I will be acting as the presidency table of the parliament this evening. We are in this constituent session to launch the parliamentary cycle of the European Declaration of Urban Rights. And I will begin with an act of opening the session by welcoming all of you, especially welcoming all the ambassadors. Thank you very much to everyone for being here with us today on such a special moment. We are launching the European Declaration of Urban Rights project today with this virtual encounter. And we are a bit nervous, but very excited because this is our first digital edition and also our first pilot test event. So welcome everyone to this prototype. We'll see how it goes. First among all, I want to give a special recognition to Aurora, Luis, Bea, Juan, Alfonso, Carlota, Alfredo, Jacobo, Alberto, Manu, Natasha, and Manuel for all her technical and personal support. Some of them are going to be today on the virtual backstage making everything magically happen. And uh, before starting with the official presentations of everyone, the first thing we are going to do is a recognition round. For all the people attending today, we are doing this as a symbolic act of swearing in the virtual parliamentary seats. And I'm going to ask you all to say hello on the chat. I don't know if you have the chat open. I want you to please say hello on the chat, everyone. We're gonna be using the chat. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. We're gonna be using the chat for any comments or anything you wanna say uh, live. We don't want to stop the presentation for anyone, but if you need anything to say, please on the chat is the space to be doing all this. Okay. So the first thing, the beginning of the parliament, I'm gonna start by reading the order of the day. To start, we're going to have an introduction of the European Declaration of the Urban Rights 2020 edition. After this introduction, on the second part, we're going to have three short presentations of the past parliamentary experiences, hopefully illustrating a nice variety of encounter options. For the third section of the event, you will take part in the action. You will present your embassy. Each of you will have five minutes to talk about yourself, your context, and your first ideas of the local parliament. And for the closing, we will have a quick Miro platform experiment. That will be the end. And now, finally, we're going to start, <laughs> the real start, the first point of the order. I will pass the word to my colleague, Aurora. Thank you very much and her presentation of the European Declaration of Urban Rights. Aurora, you've got 10 minutes, I give you the word. Thank you, Luiso. Well, I think you, well, it's amazing to see you all here. It's like, amazing. Well, I think you all know what are we doing here and what is more or less the, the European edition of this a universal declaration of urban rights. We've been developing the last years. We want to design an infrastructure to connect us all in a network in order to produce an impact. In order to produce an impact. Okay, so now you're again? Okay. If, you, if you can turn off your mics, everyone, please. Thank you. Uh, Natasha. Uh, could you change the image, please? Uh, yeah, as I was saying, we want to design an infrastructure to connect, connect us all. 
um, in order to produce an impact on urban cultures based on local knowledge and scaling up the citizen initiatives we are already doing. We want to do so because, um, as we understand, our territories are under the impact of a vast ecological crisis, uh, widespread democratic issues, let's say, and we are facing the socioeconomic uh, problems that also COVID-19 is boosting or unveiling in certain territories. And to do so, we, we, we use this symbolic idea of the parliament because it's a widely known institution to gather around problems, dilemmas, challenges, and futures, and how to design new futures is one of the main questions we are asking, we are already asking ourselves. And um, can we proceed, Lopez, <laughs> please? Thank you. Uh, we used to say that uh, we can still remember when a few Europeans came together to redesign the urban world in the last century, from their experiences, concerns, expertise, from their personal knowledge. Uh, and they made a global impact on how we organize our territories and also our lives. But many things uh, were left out in that moment. And we identified uh, people, plants, animals, different, well, a lot of diversity were left out in that moment and we call it uh, urban beings, for example, like all, all the stuff that uh, is simply never summoned in these kind of places. And that's why we don't just want to meet with you or to engage with you in a network because uh, that would be all also to, to, well, like convene because we like your work or because we have relationships and affections in common. That's why we want to build a small institution that learns and brings together those who need to clarify our questions together with, um, with others and to combine points of view and to create a real impact from diversity in the new urban agenda, agenda that we are trying to change. And that's, uh, that is why we invite to you. We are going to try to design a citizens parliamentary institution somehow, but we do not fully know what it's supposed to look like. So can you go to the next one, please? Um, thank you. That's why we are trying to make, uh, I'm sorry, that's why we are trying to make, um, in this edition, we invited you to, to convene a parliament with, lo with your local circumstances in order to gain knowledge and, dif and to try different approaches to the same problem, in order to come together in this closing plenary session at the end of the project with a handbook or a kit or something with all the learnings of the process. So we are now doing this opening session. We have a closing session at the end, uh, hopefully sharing all our learnings. And we have like a wandering parliament through all Europe with different contexts. Uh, during this autumn and that's um, that's more or less uh, the idea on how to convene this parliament in this new edition. I don't know if it's clear if it's if there's any questions. Ah yeah and if you want to, I can go deeper on what we understand as a, as a parliament or why a parliament for us is not just a gathering. So, because in Puruac we used to say that infrastructure is something else. It's not only the space, it's also the people you, you, you gather with, but also the rules or the etiquette ways you, you use to speak to each other 
the the way you distribute the world or the infrastructure you use to just record your encounters and and to yeah in order to to share your learnings so there's like a full idea of how is a parliament we want to develop with you Thank you, Aurora, for your, if there's any comment or anything you want, please, on the chat, we'll be uh, taking on that. It's very useful for us for, for getting to know what, what are your concerns and your, your thoughts about all these uh, expressed. So please give us your comment and feedbacks on the chat. Well, um, we are going to continue to the second part, the presentations of the past editions of the project. And um, hopefully we are ready for the first one. I want you to introduce you to Manuel Dominguez, a veteran of the project that has been part of most of the editions. And uh, Anna Buono, a very special guest today. Both they will present the Lisboa Urban Rights Edition in 2013, the birth of the Parliament, a very important moment for the project. Anna, Manu, now is your time. Thank you very much. Anna and Manu. Have the microphone on. Manu, I think it had... Hello? No. Sorry. Manu? Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I was already speaking. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, <laughs> thank you for inviting me uh, to this presentation. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm going to present together with Anna, that is a, 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 a loved person for Zulu Arc. She is thank a, a Zulu Arc in, in her heart. And she was um, uh, she was uh, a, a collaborator uh, some years ago. She did an internship in Madrid, and uh, now she lives in um, in South uh, Italy in an island called Ischia. And um, together, also with the rest of the team of uh, Urban Rights, we did uh, uh, the Lisbon uh, the Lisbon Parliament. So, if uh, you want to go to the first image. You will before see. To, before you start, man, I just ah, yeah, want to sorry. say hello course, and sorry, thank sorry, you. Sorry. <laughs> you were deeply right, so you did all. Thank you very much. So my uh, pleasure to meet you all. It's been a while since we don't speak with Anna, so for us it's also very touching yeah. this moment. So um, uh, Lisboa was a, like, uh, was a commission uh, by Mariana Pestana, who was the curator for the Lisbon Triennale. Uh, she called us uh, because she knew about the Urban Rights Project and she wanted to do something with us. So uh, the commission was to do this uh, Declaração Universal dos Direitos Urbanos in Lisboa, the Universal Declaration in Lisboa. And uh, at the beginning, what we, what we, what we, what, what, uh, what we did, uh, some of you may know, uh, what we did was uh, going around some, uh, running around the cities with this chair. This chair was the place where um, wherever we wanted to record some declaration, we took our, this, wooden, uh, this wooden made CNC chair and this created a personal space for every person that was interviewed. As you already may know, these uh, interviews consisted on three questions. The first one, uh, something, what, what is something to preserve in your city? The second one, was something, what would you propose for your city? And the third, words, uh, third one was, uh, what would you eradicate from your city? These three questions were made, for, uh, were made to anyone that was interviewed. Um, somehow for the Triennale team, they wanted um, something more fixed, more performative, more performative, uh, the, the more performative, sorry, um, that could took place in this 17th century palace. So um, at that moment, uh, uh, so we came up with this idea of building a urban parliament. 
a physical place to meet and to discuss about the city. To address this project, we counted on Ana Bono, who already, uh, already uh, who was, which is already here, <laughs> who was uh, the former intern in Madrid. Okay, and um, uh, I, I, sorry, because I don't want to stre uh, stretch this any longer. So uh, I just wanted to tell that this was uh, the beginning, no, the, the, the beginning of the parliament. But before we, uh, we did the parliament for the Triennale, uh, as we contacted Anna to, to be our person there, because uh, at that moment she was uh, living and working in Lisbon, uh, she proposed us uh, another, another thing. So please... Uh, we yeah, I, I invited uh, Zulu to participate to Med's reaction. Next, next, uh, next picture, please. Med's reaction is a workshop, international workshop, then in 2013, took place in Lisbon and um, we did some interventions on the in the center of the Lisbon and uh, one of them was the first construction of the urban parliament and uh, it was a modular construction so we divided in some groups and in few days we built it it was really amazing happy and serious at the same time what we did was to use this construction place in an um, old building on, of city in which students were sleeping and uh, constructing some stuff for the workshop. And every day at the end of the day, we had some topics to discuss. I was the moderator and um, I took the notes uh, during the, um, the parliamentary session and we recorded it. And in the end, at the end of the, of the workshop, we collected all the information and uh, we for, to present it to the uh, exposition, to the Triennial Architecture of Lisbon. And um, we took some topics that after were discussed on the urban parliament of the Triennial and uh, others we decided to, to introduce as were matters of the workshop, but it works worked well, well, very well for us. Um, Man, yes. if you want Next to question. continue. Yeah. So after building this first parliament, we continued working on our proposal for, um, for the Lisbon Triennale. Um, I don't know if it's a little bit, uh, if you understand that, that we were doing these things at the same time. First, uh, we were commissioned by the Lisbon Triennale, then this um, uh, METS reaction parliament showed up. So we made this kind of first parliament as a prototype, but then, but yeah, then we yeah. continued uh, with the proposal for the Triennale, of course. And this is a schematic uh, drawing of uh, what we proposed to, uh, to, to the Triennale. There was a first phase where, where we should build this uh, infrastructure, this urban parliament, where uh, some sessions will be made, inviting some um, experts and local people. Uh, our aim was uh, to uh, do this parliament uh, as, um, as an infrastructure for the city, as a urban furniture that could help both uh, uh, sessions to speak and to discuss about the city, but also we wanted to be public, I mean, in a way that everybody could go there and maybe uh, join for a picnic or uh, project a movie or whatever. So we were doing these, uh, uh, these sessions once a week and uh, the rest of the week was uh, supposedly uh, public for anyone to, to go in. The second uh, room of, the, of our intervention was um, uh, all the video we recorded uh, to the Lisbon people about these three questions I already uh, told you. And some um, boards where people could write their own uh, urban rights. Next uh, picture, please. Um, Manuel, sorry, you have one more minute. Okay. Okay, I, I did it very Hello. fast. Um, as the, the, the other urban parliament the structure was almost the same, we had one meeting per week every Tuesday, and we invited one or two people, main guests, 
that to, to open the debate. I took some notes and in the end I prepared a resume of each parliamentary session in coordination with them, with main guests. Okay? Um, well, it was an agenda. We prepared each topic. Uh, like uh, Mind Gap, Equipped Square, Half City, Open Source City, and so on. And uh, in the end, we uploaded with Aurora, I remember, and Manu, all the information of the exposition. I can say that there were a lot of people, like architecture, uh, architects, uh, urbanists, philosophers, uh, people, poor people that used the infrastructure to discuss about some problems with the municipality. They knew about parliament and they came all together to discuss with the municipality. So it was really interesting moment, I can say. Okay, it's it's a, this picture. This is how it looked like the parliament once it was built for the Triennale. Um, um, the next picture. is how it looked with, uh, in, in one session. And it, it took part, as uh, Anna said, it was a very exciting moment uh, to put together people, normal citizens of the city, together with the municipality, together with experts to discuss about uh, some specific topics. Uh, next picture, please. But as I told you, uh, for us, it was very important for this place to be an infrastructure for the city. That's why we uploaded this, uh, this space in this uh, 16th or 17th century uh, palace, this space to this uh, well-known real estate platform called Idealista, where people used to upload their, uh, to rent apartments or to sell their the buildings. Uh, we uploaded, uh, we uploaded the space here. So uh, we made clear that this was a public space. It, this was a public infrastructure to use the rest uh, of, the, of the week by any, any kind of citizen of the city. And in the, way, in the end, it worked very well for the exhibition. It was a great performance, even if it was serious, a real one, it worked as a performance, oh. totally. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Manuel, thank you very much. Anna. Such a nice surprise to have you here. And I hear you might collaborate a bit more on this European edition. So hope Woo! to see you very soon. Thank you. And uh, now I'm going to introduce you to Jacobo Cayetano. He will be talking about a very peculiar edition. The most uh, recent one that happened early this year, 2020, in La Palma, La Palma edition. Jacobo, now is your turn. If you could please uh, tell us uh, about it. Thank you very much. You have five minutes, and uh, I will tell you when there's only one minute left. Thank you. Hola, Peña. Eh, os conozco prácticamente a todos, entonces voy a hablar en inglés para que veáis lo mal que hablo. Vale. Eh, he preparado un papel. Ahí, un momento. No puedo, un momento. Eres un crack. No puedo mover esto. Un momento, disculpar. Ay. Ahora. Ok. Eh. Uh, I, I was going to make this exhibition in Spanish, but the text has been translated by Google Translator. Uh, hello, good afternoon. I'm Jacob, and I haven't had time to prepare this explanation about the project Aquí Dragones. Uh, I can't speak fluent English. So I'm going to read some text in English that have been translated for me. Um, a ver, la primera foto es esta, sí. Eh, aquí hay dragones, y son dragones, eh, was the sentence written on medieval maps when it was no, not know what was belong a certain territory when it was not know what was there. Lo voy a decir en castellano donde no sabías lo que había, por si no lo explicaba bien en inglés. Eh, siguiente foto. 
muy bonito. In Spain, 17% of the population lives in rural areas. These rural areas are known as the empty Spain, a territory where we hardly know what there is. In this empty Spain, there are a large number of people with disabilities that the administration have not attempted to nor listen to. Next. Uh, Aquí Aragones is a project that works uh, with people with disabilities in rural areas of Spain throughout Arctic practice and urban planning. Y a partir de ahora vas pasando fotos porque como hay 20, pues entonces yo voy leyendo y tú vas pasando. Um, the first edition of this project was carried out on the island of La Palma, one of the most incredible and natural places in Spain. Uh, there, for two months, we worked with 20 people with disabilities, designed new furnitures in dialogue, in dialogue with nature, with the neighbors um, and the other people, through walks and conversations. Uh, they designed and built some furnitures that, as you can see, the images are incredible. Photo, y más fotos, y hay muchas fotos, more, more photos. Uh, this furniture, uh, built by them, formed a parliament of diversity, a uh, space that, when brought together, serves, serves as a parliament to talk about accessibility, about leisure, about our towns and cities. The parliament was set up at different points on a very important road on the island. What we have learned from this project. One, everything is possible. Two, the more you mix people up, the better. Neighborhood, architectures, artists, farmers, etc. And three, you have to celebrate all the time. If there are is one thing we have learned in design and building this furniture, is it, it is that the more you celebrate what is happening, the more people will come together. And the conclusion. Um, it is a uh, ver aquí. It is everyone's business to give visibility and support to projects that give voice throughout art to people with disabilities in our rural areas. Otherwise, they will continue to be unknown in the far reaches of the territory. In your cities, in your village, go and listen. Something is happening. Thank you. Jacobo, thank you very much. Your English was very good, even, even closer to mine. Thank yeah. you so much. So nice to see La Palma Parliament. Okay, so now we are going to go to the third, uh, the third example. To finish this, this part of the past edition, I will give the word to Aurora back to talk about the Jeff Janes Parliamentary Tour. Also a very special edition of the Parliament on the Road. Aurora, you have the word now. Remember five minutes, I will tell you when it's time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa. Well, uh, well this is just chance. An example on how this methodology worked in a rural context in the northern Spain, as to it, a few years ago. Uh, they were like experiencing a difficult time at the communal level. Is, uh, with a level of social fracture concerning the territorial model that was going to be deployed. And there was a level of conflict that led up to a change in the government. And they, they established an alliance with four completely different parties. It was like a, a really strange situation. They only had in common two, two headlines, like, they want to design a more sustainable project than the previous one that, that uh, had been developed uh, the previous years for the, the, other, the previous the former government. And they want to make it in a more particip participatory way. And they invited to work to, to try to understand what was happening there and to try to, to help them to get to this to 
future ideas like sustainable and participatory. And we arrived there with a bunch of uh, a bunch of different methodologies. We used the archive methodology of the declaration before. We used like we've been interviewing a lot of people in the field, trying to to connect what uh, everyone was saying, and with the idea of uh, the resource already speaking they should speak together because they are always like fighting and having a lot of uh, well problems between that between each other and maybe we, we can put the, the territory to speak together and can you change the image we we understand some of their main problems where what we call controversies, you know, to say, okay, you are facing big issues. A lot of different rural territories all around the world are facing the same issues than you. Uh, and they are really weird and it's really difficult to design the, the regional plan you're trying to design because you are not all together with, a, with a, um, a common idea or what's the common good. You are debating on if maybe we should uh, base all our economy, for example, in uh, tourism, or maybe we should be focused on the real estate, or maybe we should uh, go backwards and, and establish a more rural communities. So they are fighting with each other because each decision really affects the daily life of each inhabitant. So we try to uh, visualize all of these controversies with uh, two different images. The controversies diagram, which is similar than the, um, the template we, we're gonna send you, of unboxing the problem and the embodiment one. We established there the idea of uh, urban issues, urban problems, they're, they're not problems, abstract problems. The, the problem should be a problem for someone. So we explain what was happening in the, in the area based on the daily life of someone. Here, for example, I don't know, um, in this example, but this is, for example, an embodiment explaining all these different problems and we use the um, traditional infrastructure they used to gather in, to, to solve common problems they, they to, to show this kind of images and to try to to get some some uh, uh, some point to some understanding between people who was who were always fighting and can you proceed, Professor? Thank you. One more minute, Aurora. Sorry. Okay. No. We we use the infrastructure they they are used to use. We organize twenty seven parliaments in different spaces through through the Concejo. They are more or less used to use this infrastructure it's called Concejos Públicos, where they summon to, for example, design stuff like uh, how to, I don't know, organize the common work to, to do something in the forest or how to, whatever. And we use this infrastructure as parliaments. With the, with the, our methodology and our blackboard, can you go to the next one? So we organize with this idea of the parliaments a new way to speak about their problems with the uh, specific order of the day, uh, going through certain points and trying to establish relationships between what would be the potentials or what would be the controversies and what would be the problems and so on, with the idea of uh, practice on a way on how, how to make public the public problems somehow. In order to go from these small discussions you have in the cafeteria 
uh, to a new way of solving the pro public problems in public. And we, do, we did it like we iterated 27 times. We, we went with this, um, Manu and I went with this blackboard to all the villages and all the people were like making a photo and, and so on as a way of legitimate the content in this blackboard. And this was really useful there, trying to contextualize each parliament with their problems, with their specific uh, invited participants, with specific experts per, per parliament, depending on whether it was a parliament in the shore or in the mountain or the kind of problems that they used to deal with. But, uh, but it was really, really useful. And this blackboard seems like, but uh, maybe it seems not really important, but it was really relevant. And that's the, the a tool we want to present you and we also want to share with you. And somehow the media we are using now is somehow this blackboard, this digital blackboard we want to, to share with you as a tool in this Site, parliamentary cycle. If you want to know more about the project, you can visit the page, the web page. And that's also a good example, I think, on how to mix hybrid, uh, hybrid parliaments with uh, really, really, really rural infrastructure, for example, for the summoning, but also trying to keep every everything like transparent and, and the information open and to, to be always transparent with everything we are doing, we were doing in the digital sphere. And I think you well, it can be useful I think, at certain point for any of your colleagues. Totally, definitely, Aurora, thank you very much. Okay, so thank you. Ana, thank you, Manuel, thank you, Jacobo, thank you, Aurora, for introducing thank you to all these amazing past editions of the Urban Rights Parliament. Very inspiring, all of them. Thank you so much. And now is your turn, embassies. Uh, let me check. Yeah, we are on perfect timing. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the second, the third part of this, uh, of the order of the day. The most important part, your presentations. Um, So I'm going to just tell you the order of these presentations and then you will have five minutes, five minutes each of the embassy to present yourself. And uh, if you want to share your screen, that'll be very the easier way to present anything. If you want, just tell us what you want and uh, our technician will give you the right to do it. The, the first embassy, the first presentation will be the Berlin Embassy in Germany. The second one will be Ariège Embassy in France. The third one will be our Digital Embassy. Uh, the fourth one will be the Amberes Embassy, Belgium. The fifth one will be Testropia Embassy in Greece. And uh, the sixth one will be Bologna Embassy in Italy. Just before starting, I'm going to ask you all one more thing, very important. For the closing experience that we are going to have after this, I want you all to be very, uh, very attent and uh, focusing on the presentation because we are going to ask you to give comments to each of the other embassies. So each of you have to have a little comment or a little thing to share with all the embassies. So please uh, listen carefully and uh, all the presentations and write down your comments for the final workshop. So now I'm going to give the word to Berlin friends of Construct Lab. Masha, thank you for being here. Uh, you have uh, five minutes and uh, I will tell you when there's one minute left. So Please, if you want to go on, 
Thank you very much, Thank Masa. Thank you, Luiso. I'm here with my invisible colleague, uh, Licha, and maybe she can also just say hello, uh, so we see if we can hear her well. Hello. <laughs> Super. Um, so I will share my screen once you... Uh, just a minute, I'm about to give you permission. Yeah, just a minute. I'm here in Berlin, um, as Licha is also, but uh, actually Culture Club is a network that's quite spread out over um, all of Europe. Okay. Should it be working by now, the yes. sharing of the screen? Now, yes, ah. you're a co-host, yeah. Great, thank you. So I guess you can see my um, yes. template now. Um, yeah, so our introduction is already like from the very first question, which is very simple question that you give, a bit going um, complicated because I think this is in the, um, in the nature of our um, network or rhizomic structure or chaotic enterprise, as we um, put it for the question of how, how we work as a structure. And it is also a bit uh, the direction we want to explore um, in your invitation of um, participating in these urban rights, because um, uh, what our strength is, we think, is to be very on site, very entangled with very complex situations, and uh, develop like an attentive and productive approach to. Um, situation to cultivate proximity and convivial moments to have good um, like, uh, good moments together and also to have a to, to practice like a lively um, li lively negotiation of the city um, and uh, what we wonder then sometimes how to how to keep su such a um, working rhythm and how to keep um, such a practice together and how to be transparent and democratic within our structure and how to um, develop the, the um, tools to be both at the same time. Um, Lisa, we can hear you, so do you want to take over? <laughs> Yeah. So um, th thank you for uh, the invitation, also, by the way. Uh, I forgot I, to say. <laughs> I don't see any faces, but I see the names. I'm happy to see a lot of uh, names that I that I would like to see in person. And um, yeah, so as Masha was saying, and as we were uh, we were challenged by your template because we were uh, every question puts uh, us in in trouble uh, in order to. Um, answer to this question we always have to uh, negotiate uh, them and and this is actually the the point uh, um, uh, that we wanted to work out in uh, developing your proposal for the urban parliament in berlin because of course there are a lot of organizations uh, and initiatives in berlin that are doing quite in, in innovating and, and successful work in uh, uh, designing the city uh, from from below, uh, but uh, uh, the problem is that uh, behind the, the pictures of successful of successfulness, the stories that you hear that are uh, uh, very interesting and inspiring, we th there is a back there, there is a backstage to this, uh, and this is the point to, to which we we were discussing about uh, Construct Lab because we have very different interesting projects in Berlin going on at the moment that we would have liked to talk about. Uh, in, uh, in the parliament, but we were firstly concerned about the fact that inside the, our initiative, and as we know also inside other initiatives, there are questions that are open regarding uh, uh, what Masha was saying, the equality inside the organization, the democratic organization, the uh, gender relations, uh, the relation to also 
um, the diversity in these organizations. So the idea that we wanted to bring up, and maybe you can give your comment on this, uh, we would be really happy to hear what you think, is to uh, organize a parliament that gives the word to the people that are uh, subordinate in these organizations, that are oppressed in these organizations, or that are simply working there but uh, don't have uh, the possibility to be under the lights when it's a presentation time and uh, to give them the stage to be able to or us ourselves to to be able to discuss about what is we when we talk about uh, all of these initiatives or these organizations there is always this question of we are doing this we stay all we uh, but we wanted to discuss what what about us who is this we and uh, what ha what happens to this we when uh, we become mothers, when uh, we become older, so when we have an handicap, when we come from another uh, um, let's say geographical background, and what is the consequence, uh, um, what is the city that we produce uh, according to this we. So the idea is to organize a parliament of uh, exchange about how, in, like to discuss uh, how inclusive and diverse organizations are or should be and what kind of city they produce accordingly. So the idea is to uh, produce uh, like uh, knowledge around these uh, questions, but at the same time uh, to find solutions and to not just look at critical points, but also at proposals that are already made to cope with these uh, questions that are concerning uh, all of our uh, organizations. Um, yeah, that's it. But uh, regarding Council Club, I don't know if we have to tell a little uh, a bit more. You can have a look at all the projects that we've been done. It's a very diverse uh, series of projects uh, that we work bec uh, on because we have a very big uh, network, as we were saying, like around uh, five, if you consider, consider the uh, hardcore of Council Club, but we arrived to 50 members when we have our yearly meeting and we are spread all over Europe and each of us has a peculiar way of uh, working, but we share a common uh, view or values that Masha was uh, mentioning before. I don't know if there are any questions. I guess we are, we are being a bit confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Licia and Masha, for, the, for your time and for your explanation. It was pretty clear. And uh, yeah, a very special, very sensitive approach to this backstage uh, thing, a topic necessary to have the time to bring this issue into the conversation. So thank you very much for doing it and for asking about the we, who we are, who, who we are doing this. Um, now I'm going to give the word to the friend Amis of uh, Love Plus Initiative, uh, Felix and Alfonso. Uh, thank you for being here, I give you now the five minutes and uh, we are listening. Okay. Felix, Felix I there? think you're going okay. Hello, hello everyone. Thank you, Luis. Um, so I start, Alfonso. I will start. Um, so, um, here we are. Uh, we we are in Pyrenees, in South France, uh, so not uh, not too far from Spain. Uh, and um, we've got a, a project that starts in 2016 um, uh, that opened a place here um, uh, in the middle of nowhere. Um, we have a few villages around us. Uh, with no more than uh, four four hundred people by uh, uh, commonly, uh, and then sorry for for that. Um, here, so the Laplace is a is a fab lab, but we have uh, many other skills around us. Uh, we uh, we do co working. We uh, we uh, we start the place with um, um, with a lot of projects, but the the principal um, the first things 
we we want to um, to get involved to is uh, singing sync um, together. So we experiment, we produce uh, sometimes with technology, uh, numerical te technology or old 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 technology uh, like farming or anything. Um, so for this project, we are not alone. We uh, we we try to um, to get um, to formalize a group a group uh, with um, a, an assess two association. Arter is uh, Arter is a uh, is an association about um, um, how to uh, to work in a small city with citizen. Um, and uh, Resolez is a citizen network because uh, in mountains we uh, we we are spread around uh, sometimes um, uh, sorry uh, a network of of valley. Uh, Est-ce que c'est ça, Alfonso? Les vallées? Yeah. Okay. And the valley. Uh, the valley yeah. Okay. Okay. And so to to get uh, in um, in um, in some meeting events or, or anything, we, we have to, to, to manage and, and uh, put a lot of energy to, to, uh, to reach each other. Um, so maybe I could talk about two, uh, two or three projects we, uh, we, we start a few years, few years ago. Uh, there is, um, there is a nice and um, uh, and um, yeah, it's a nice project. It's it's with Paul Emploi. Paul Emploi is an unemployment uh, office, and uh, we um, we have learning list, uh, session um, with unemployed people, and uh, we work together to um, to try to um, um, facilitate the the access to uh, digital tools, technology. And um, and put some autonomy in uh, in few uh, in the world. Uh, digital autonomy is a, is a, is a, is an aspect we uh, we are really involved in. Um, so we uh, we we ask uh, on interroge. We ask some um, professional way to get. Uh, um, to get in a in a network group uh, of of um, of unemployed uh, people, unemployed people, um, and then the the last project we have uh, at the moment is um, um, a skills network, um, and uh, there is a, a lot of form of that. But uh, the first that's coming on uh, November is a, is a platform. To share skill in our territory, so it's a um, it's a small and local uh, uh, social network. Um, so we uh, we understand yeah we understand skill in a in a wide way tools space services we uh, we uh, we want to to make it uh, larger as possible. So. Um, as I said, uh, Pyrenees and uh, and Ariège is a uh, is a bit um, an, in a place of nowhere. But uh, uh, we try to exist um, so, uh, au-delà. Um, yes, sorry, out we try to, to exist <laughs> out, out there. Yeah, exactly. And uh, because some some of us are, are coming from uh, big cities and. Uh, and uh, we are maybe neo neo urbans. I don't think if if, if we can say that like this. Um, so for our um, we we are we want to try something with the uh, urban right parliament. We we want to try with our embassy to um, to get uh, some um, uh, more specific discussion. Then uh, we uh, we try to uh, um, I I don't remember who who said that uh, first, but um, we uh, we have some common um, so we have some common uh, uh, situation when 
we start a conversation here about uh, uh, do we want some uh, um, uh, reintroduction of uh, uh, old species like the, the bear here? I don't know if you, you heard that, but in Pyrenees, we, we, won't, uh, we, we won't have bears for many years. And, and for, for some reason, we, we start to reintroduce them in, in our in natural places. And, um, and it's, it's a lot of um, uh, harsh discussion about this this situation uh, there is um, an old industry too uh, that is uh, dying here and uh, for some reason uh, there is there is uh, a lot of projects to uh, um, revitalize uh, to um, to restart this old industry um, Felix uh, sorry you have one more minute yeah okay I, I okay so the project here is to um, um, rich people and um, put put in their hand the the tools to um, um, talk, but with uh, with times and intimacy. We want uh, the that meeting to um, to be uh, uh, really intimate and um, and only between two people because. Uh, we are meeting here, uh, souvent, obviously, we, we, meet, uh, um, we meet together uh, with, uh, with too many people. So in groups, in, in large group, we, we won't talk uh, uh, naturally or we, we use mechanical uh, um, uh, answer. And, and so we want to ca ca uh, capture, uh, Alfonso, tu peux m'aider? On voudrait capturer. To record. We, yeah, we like to record, uh, sorry, thanks Alfonso. Uh, we like to capture uh, um, more natural um, and um, intimate answer to those questions, those common questions. And so uh, for the, um, uh, we want to restitue, uh, restitue Alfonso, s'il te plaît. We'd like to share that, that, that conclusions um, uh, with all the participants and, uh, and reintroduce the same questions, the same uh, debate, debate uh, and, uh, and look what's happened. Is, 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 uh, is, uh, Qu'est-ce qu'il va émerger? Qu'est-ce qu'on va avoir comme um, réponse? Que, does, it will, um, does it will be more um, um, progressist? Or uh, est-ce qu'on va vouloir revenir un peu en arrière? Um, voilà, we, we want to, to use these tools also because we, uh, um, on, we know them. Uh, we use a lot of uh, recordings uh, session. We, lot, uh, we have um, um, journalists in our team. So, so I think we, we can manage that. Here and share with us with you. Sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you very mm. much, Felix. We understand everything. Your English is very good. Mm. Such as uh -huh. <laughs> Go on. Thanks. Very thanks, interesting. Please. Your your mediation between the old and the new inhabitants of the territory. Such a such an amazing issue. And uh, your approach mm. to all type of technologies in this uh, rural daily life, all and especially the conflicts. Uh, of mm -hmm. the unemployment and rural. I mean, very interesting topics mm -hmm. that you were talking about. Thank you. Thank you very much, Felix. And uh, now we're going with uh, Alfonso, uh, our multi ambassador that will present us the digital embassy. Thank you very much, Alfonso. You have uh, another five minutes and I will, play, I will tell you when you have one more minute left. Thank you very much, Alfonso. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Luiso. Um, so, um, um, I take part in La Plaza, uh, as Felix uh, has said. Uh, I'm living here in the, in the Pyrenees, uh, uh, close to, to Felix, in another valley. Um, but I also take part in another collective that is called Montera 34. Montera 34, 
And um, uh, Luiso and Aurora uh, has had this idea of uh, uh, doing this digital embassy that is um, the idea behind it is to, uh, to think uh, uh, about the digital spaces as another, another territory. And I think it makes sense uh, um, more in this, in this project of urban rights that uh, um, uh, in which we are going to work uh, from very different territories and we are going to be coordinated. Um, and and it's, it's also pertinent uh, nowadays because um, of, the, of, the, of the global pandemic context. No? We have seen that uh, nowadays the digital spaces and the, the way we use it, we use them, um, is very, very important. To, uh, to keep in contact, to, uh, to uh, produce collaborative, um, uh, collect, uh, in a collaborative way. Uh, so, um, in Montera, uh, I, I put you in, in context to know with, uh, what we do um, quickly. Uh, more or less, we do uh, three things in Montera. We, uh, we work with data. Uh, we analyze and we uh, visualize data to, uh, to understand transformation, uh, cultural, social, or urban transformations. Um, the second thing we do is develop and build a digital infrastructure to uh, facilitate collaboration uh, among organizations. And the third thing we do uh, is to uh, create um, production and meeting spaces uh, because we think that um, uh, we need these spaces uh, digital spaces and physical ones too to uh, to develop a share uh, um, a common idea of, of technology we need these spaces to think uh, about technology because we are using uh, using it all the time um, so with this idea is this idea is on on mine. Um, uh, we are uh, creating or coordinating this digital embassy um, because uh, we think that uh, we are going to to uh, we can facilitate uh, four things um, in all the process of uh, the European Parliament Urban Rights. Uh, the first thing is uh, to work together. At the same time, uh, we, are, we are going to need that. Um, the second thing is uh, to communicate uh, among us uh, because we are working from, from, different, from, from different territories, uh, as I said uh, before. Uh, the third one is to be informed, to be updated about the, the progress of, of the project in, in, in other territories to get feedback uh, and to, to apply knowledge and methodologies and tools that uh, are going to be developed in, in the other territories. Uh, I think this is uh, one of the main goals of, of doing this uh, edition uh, in which uh, all the territories are working at the same time in, a, in coordination. And the fourth thing is, uh, and this is for me, uh, maybe the most important one is to document all the things that uh, we are going to do. Um, for me, uh, in Montera, we, we think that it's very, very important to document all the processes because it's the, the base of, of the collaboration. Um, the more we document uh, a project, the more, the more easier is that other people uh, collaborate in it. Um, and, and, and also it's a good way to, uh, to um, uh, in which you can uh, go back if, if you uh, got wrong uh, and, and take a different, a different way because you, you can do the step back uh, um, um, and then uh, take this, this a different way. So in practical terms, um, uh, now the, this digital infrastructure that we, are, we have designed to, uh, to, to work together is 
uh, a website. You can check it in urbanrights.org. Um, there you are going to find uh, information about the project, updates about the, the, the different embassies. Um, and you can, uh, from now, register in the, in the site. And if you want to uh, uh, subscribe to the newsletter, um, uh, the second space of the infrastructure is a, is a wiki. Uh, this space, uh, uh, you, can, you can find it in uh, wiki.urbanrights.org. Uh, and is the main space of documentation. Uh, in the same way, you can register in there. And uh, if you want, you, uh, you can, uh, from now, uh, start to, util to use it to document your, uh, to document your, uh, your processes. Um, you are going to see in the homepage of the, of the wiki that there is a very, very tiny uh, a set of instruction to, uh, to create uh, new pages uh, and to start to document it uh, easily. Uh, the third tool is a Alfonso, Telegram group. Alfonso, yeah. sorry, you have one, one more minute. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Luiso. Uh, the third tool is a, is a Telegram group. Uh, I think uh, after uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the last part of the session, we are going to work in a mirror whiteboard as Natasha said uh, uh, before, and there you can find the, 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 the address of the, of, the, of the Telegram group. So uh, if you follow the, the address, you, you can su subscribe, to, you can join the conversation in, in the group. Um, and I think more or less that's all. Uh, well, we are, we are having a, a digital embassy session 22nd uh, October, uh, I guess. Uh, and in this session, we are going to Alfonso, define... Alfonso, Alfonso. Yeah. Uh, uh, that was my part, presenting your session. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. It is the, I, we have a lot of people to go and uh, we're going to go through that. Sorry. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. Well, uh, that's nice. it. Nice spoil for the end. So that is okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alfonso. And uh, Alfonso, our technological guardian angel, absolutely. So interesting for us to work with you, especially from your vision of making everything open and collaborative. And uh, making the process accessible to everyone is such an important thing. And, and you have an amazing way of doing it. You are the perfect digital ambassador for us. Thank you very much. And uh, for facilitating the visualization and documentation of all this project. It's so interesting to be also a prototype for you. Okay, so I give the word now to Martin and David, the Amberes Embassy in Belgium. When you, you have uh, also five minutes and uh, we hear you. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm David. I, I, I've been working uh, like about eight years at uh, ZuloArc. And last year I came back um, to Belgium. And uh, a few months ago, uh, they asked me if I wanted to be the ambassador of Antwerp. I said, I was really flattered, but um, I was like, I've been 10 years, eight years uh, away, so I know nothing what's going on in Antwerp. And that's why I called, uh, when I called in my, my good friend, Martin, um, he has an office called uh, Endeavors. And he's one of the main officers in Belgium who is working around participation on, on, on different levels. Uh, so I thought, uh, he's going to be the expert in uh, looking what uh, in the project we we're gonna do. So maybe I will uh, let Martin uh, introduce a little bit what you do at uh, Endeavors. Yes, hi, nice to meet you all. Um, thank you, David, um, uh, for introducing me. So uh, with Endeavor, we are a, gr a group. Uh, we are a cooperative of uh, architects. Uh, 
planners, but also sociologists, uh, anthropologists, uh, with uh, um, yeah, our business, let's say our activities uh, are mainly uh, organizing the dialogue between uh, stakeholders in complex uh, urban uh, renewal projects. So our clients are mostly uh, uh, municipalities, cities and um, governments, local governments. And together we always try to rethink the process of uh, um, spatial development and include as many uh, different perspectives as possible. So it's uh, it's it's a very participative work that we do, uh, pushing the boundaries of of uh, uh, conventional planning methods. We try to uh, I don't know be a bit uh, a pain in the ass, you know, and and and, and always ask uh, difficult and critical questions to. To make the process even more, to create some cracks and 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 allow more um, input and uh, different types of results. So the the products that we deliver are not always, uh, let's say, a classical um, a plan or a master plan. But sometimes it is the uh, uh, sometimes our products is a new form of uh, organization uh, of a new way of uh, working together with different city services, for example. Uh, to address a certain uh, socio-spatial problem, such as safety in public space, just to name something. So that that is more or less what we do um, um, for our clients' cities. But next to that, sometimes there is this, um, I think we all uh, sometimes just do things because we believe in it and, and not because it is an assignment. Uh, and, and, and this is also how we started, just by working for local neighborhood committees uh, helping them, uh, doing workshops, uh, finding solutions. Uh, we discovered this 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 role uh, uh, of intermediary. Uh, we we also tried to uh, with the people of Antwerp, of our city, we tried to buy one of the biggest, the tallest buildings here in in Antwerp, which was going to be sold to a highest bidder. Uh, and we, as a protest, we started this campaign that uh, no, it's the people of Antwerp who will be impacted by this development. Uh, so we should be able to buy it and develop it in a way that that contributes to the to our uh, values in, in in the city. So it was a, a very fun experiment, uh, and um, we we learned a lot from it. We didn't manage to buy this uh, uh, tower, but uh, it was uh, a good example of uh, yeah, how we sometimes just just to throw ourselves uh, into this kind of. Uh, activist uh, campaigns and, and, and try to um, rethink conventional models of uh, developing. And so one of these uh, projects now is, um, is a space, literally a 400 square meter space in, in the city center where we are staging, uh, we're giving a space to this dialogue about the city uh, of tomorrow. Uh, it is in a partnership with Pakhuis de Zwijger, which is in Amsterdam, a, a very uh, a landmark uh, organization and, 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 and institute when it comes to dialogue, organizing dialogue in events around uh, city making in, in every way possible. Topics as uh, diversity, super diversity, sustainability, it's, it's, it's uh, all programmed there. And uh, so we are making now a small a little sister uh, or brother of this organization. And uh, so the, the connection with this urban rights um, project is that we, um, uh, we, we were thinking of organizing uh, some uh, urban rights related events uh, in Stats uh, form, which is the name of this, this place. Um, and uh, one of the first ideas that we uh, that that came to mind was um, uh, because of this COVID crisis, we were uh, locked, not only locked down in uh, in uh, our houses, uh, but there was also a curfew in Antwerp, uh, maybe also in your cities. Uh, we couldn't uh, leave the house between uh, let's say 10 uh, p.m. And, and 6 a.m. Uh, and and so there was this uh, law. Uh, specialists, uh, constitutional specialists in in in, uh, in the media, who uh, were telling that it's very striking how people just uh, accept this kind of rules that are not constitutional. So it's actually not that simple for a city or a local government to just implement a rule like that. 
because it is not constitutional. And, and so it was uh, for us a nice way to start thinking about this. Uh, should, uh, aren't there more of this kind of uh, laws or rights that we have especially in a city that we just don't know about. Uh, and so we'd like to uh, take this urban rights uh, uh, declaration as, as an opportunity to together with uh, some uh, professors in, in legal uh, rights and constitution to yeah, start looking and digging into the rights that are already there and, 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 and maybe finding a way to make it more visible and transparent can be by talking about it uh, but can also be a more guerrilla style just d claiming your rights in the streets and one example is here in in the city of antwerp we have the right every martin person, sorry you have one more minute yeah, sorry right, okay. <laughs> uh, so every person uh, who lives in antwerp has the right to organize a um an event in the public space. So, for example, a friend of mine who <laughs> discovered this uh, right, uh, she married in a kiosk in the park, which is usually not, like, nobody knows it. And, and the city had to even support it by bringing the chairs for the wedding. So it's really great. And uh, by doing that, you make the statement that there is a, a right that you have, you should just claim it. So this is, I think, our way of, of, of maybe, um, yeah, filling in this, this uh, urban rights project is, is, is making more accessible existing mm -hmm. rights. Yeah, or think about using this kiosk to, to do an event, but without saying it's an event for urbanists or, or people yeah. um, focused already on, on participation in urban issues, because otherwise you uh, very often get a really narrow narrow public mm -hmm. uh, so we, we want to trigger i don't know how people that go randomly there and then to make ah you can do something about the city uh, and and you have some rights that, that you don't know about exactly. so that's that's basically it i think thank you very much thank you very interesting approach of endeavor and this intermediary expertise that you have it's going to be very, very inspiring for everybody else. And uh, your activist attitude in the middle. And uh, what a great, uh, what a great thing. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And now we are going uh, very fast. We are a bit uh, on a late, sorry. Uh, I'm going to ask you to please stay on the five minutes. If not, we're going to end up very late. And the last ones, uh, no, not the last ones, but uh, now we're going with uh, Cristina from Morphe, the Therestopia region in Greece. Thank you very much, Cristina. You have uh, five minutes. You have the voice. Thank you so much for this invitation. Um, I'm super happy to, to work with all of you in this project. Uh, we are very, very pleased in TIRLAB that we got invited and, and be part of the of the uh, parliament and become an embassy in Greece in this smaller region. I have a small presentation to show you so you can have an idea of what we are doing in Tirelab since we're a super new initiative and what is the um, context that we're talking about. Uh, I think I can share my screen. If you see. I'm gonna go very quickly through. We are watching it. We can Thank save effort. Yeah. Cool. That's it. So um, uh, we are located in the northwestern of Greece. Uh, our initiative started as a vision uh, from this small like uh, village that I come from that is called Epiros. Um, I think you don't see. Well, it's okay. You don't see the images that I see. I need to wait a little bit. Um, so we had, it was the attempt to, to revive like a small factory, a small cheese factory. Our name Tiri means cheese in Greece uh, in order to turn it into a community incubator. Um, so a, spa a space that different organizations, associations, local initiatives and individuals can exchange knowledge and, and mutually grow. Um, basically, Tiri Lab, uh, I mean, the last year we have been working through different uh, uh, 
uh, networks and through different activities like uh, kitchen and cooking, uh, music and dance, fruit, uh, food production that we group in three big categories that are called, uh, we call them architectural and technological heritage, intangible cultural heritage and natural environmental heritage. Uh, we think these three big categories are, as, or we consider these groups as territorial commons and through uh, different actions, research, production and education, we are looking for new perspectives, new opportunities and new economies in this small, small area um, in the north of Greece. Um, this is a little bit some photos of the, of the three groups. Uh, we started last year, so I'm going to go through three projects that we have been developing and then there are on ongoing projects uh, and then tell you a little bit of our ideas about our parliament. Um, uh, we started last year with a project mapping the margins uh, because we wanted to see who is there and what's, what's actually happening uh, in the area. We identify a number of women in associations and initiatives in the area and also a lot of abandoned buildings, a lot of public abandoned buildings like school, um, like schools. Um, the, very quickly to understand a little bit how the area looks like, it has a lot of mythological topologies like uh, some um, ancient theaters, some kind of uh, mythological places. It, cons it consists like 50%, more than 50% of the whole region uh, has like uh, protected areas that actually currently are in danger because the law, the government changed the law of uh, Natura 2000 protected areas in Greece, which is another topic that we would like to touch with our local parliament. Um, and it's also a landscape of multicultural nations because it's an area that has on the coast like a Venet Venetian influence that it's something that the people uh, from Italy they have uh, encountered before and they see it's very common in the in the inland where all the where our place and the village is located there are more Ottoman influence uh, villages um, and also um, you can see like the heavy touristified coast with a pastoral inland. And in this inland, there are like uh, more than 120 small villages that they have less of 500 uh, population. Um, more than 80 of them, they have less than 100 people population, like the village that we are located, Morphe. And something interesting to understand is like these areas, due to this rough topography, there these villages and these communities are also disconnected. So for us, it was also when we were uh, traveling to visit them, it was also an opportunity to, to bring them together or to let them know what other initiatives and, and um, um, activities are happening around the area. Um, we discovered different patterns of living, uh, grouping them under the intangible cultural heritage, that is like this kind of natural hydro scrubbing, uh, scrubbing place. And most importantly, uh, a lot of uh, women or many women associations that they're using like uh, schools of gathering and production. Uh, and we start mapping all this initiative, like, Mm, women initiatives, women cooperatives and local cultural associations in order to start visualizing slowly like a kind of network that all these, uh, all these places uh, can come, all these initiatives can come together and reuse uh, some of these abandoned places in the area. Uh, why we work with, why we work mostly and collaborate with women associations uh, and initiatives First, because we believe they provide like a post-growth imaginary through various levels of organizing and producing. And secondly, because, and, and kept these villages alive actually during the, the economic crisis. And secondly, because we, this, the position of these women through all these years was like that it was caregivers for the families and the parents and the kids. It has transformed into a format of care for the whole community. So we value 
um, we value these initi this initiatives and spaces as spaces of resistance. This is how we call them. Uh, last year, uh, with many of our friends here in the uh, in this meeting, we did the first international encounter, bringing uh, uh, many professionals from different countries. Uh, we call it that they came to Morphe to this little village and they stayed with the local families. Uh, we call it Summer of Nothing. Uh, we challenge basically the idea of nothingness. Um, uh, meaning like uh, in from the merging a little bit the Asian philosophy with the Stoic philosophy, uh, like what you can uh, not do, but nothing is left undone. So understanding a little bit the, the, uh, the way of living and uh, what's happening in the area. Cristina, one more minute. So the, thank you, Luisa. Uh, the current uh, work that we are doing right now, uh, that we're starting and would like to also introduce it in this kind of uh, uh, parliament that we're thinking, um, it has to do with ecology. Uh, what, we're, what we start doing is some encounters with uh, community, with local communities, bringing together for the first time like the uh, women initiatives, uh, the women association, uh, local, people from the local community and uh, people from the municipality in order to, to start understanding what's happening in these villages and what are the, the opportunities and what are the possibilities. Uh, what we've done is that we start, we did this in two villages already, and we start also walking on the natural paths that as I was telling you, uh, that we want to understand and, and uh, raise awareness about the natural landscape there, that it's currently in danger. Uh, not only because of that, but because also it has a lot of mythological references from the area, from the, from the people there, and it's also connected with their local economy. So they're basically super connected with this. Uh, I mean, their life is depending on these kind of uh, areas around. Um, our idea from the for the local for the parliament that maybe it's interesting since we are rural the maybe the second rural parliament together with the Pyrenees friends um is to do we have like basically two ideas one it could be like to to have some local meetings there uh which i don't know how possible it is due to the coronavirus but we will try to 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 do these meetings more often since we start uh, doing it in, in last August, I mean in August. Uh, but the, the, we would like to bring possibly a digital, to make like a digital, digital parliament, bringing different people that they talk about rural uh, commons and people that they live in the periphery, uh, local initiatives from the area and I mean, um, different associations uh, to start talking about uh, food sovereignty, new exchanging forms, collective intelligence, and emerging crisis resilience, socio socio technological systems. So these are the topics that we would like to to possibly start talking about in the um, in this rural parliament that we would like to develop but yes i would like to hear more about uh, your opinions and uh, your ideas as well thank you thank you very much christina it's uh, wow what an interesting project i want a wonderful initiative tiri lab so looking forward to listen more about all these territorial common strategies to tackle these urban issues and uh, on this isolated village and uh, the wonderful region. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now, uh, for finishing the last uh, embassy presentation, uh, our friends uh, Julia, Irene, Cecilia, and Alfredo from Bologna. Embassy, thank you very much. I don't Hello. know how to present. Okay. Irene. Hello. It's your time. Thank you very much. Eh, yes. Sí. Perdón, Luis. Eh, ¿Puedo compartir el, la pantalla? Eh, sí, estás eh. habilitado. Sí, you can. Ah, okay. perfecto. Thank you. Okay. I read uh, our presentation.
uh, we are for a professional who met at Ferrara University of Architecture. Each of us has uh, developed their own career path while maintaining contacts and collaboration with others. Irene, member of Fare Associati, Cecilia, member of TV Studio, Giulia, freelance landscape designer, and Alfredo, member of Dulor. We define ourselves as a collective of people who have interest to develop uh, urban regeneration projects. Sustainable mobility and uh, territorial enhancement. Two terms that most of all uh, summarize uh, the types of projects we want to activate uh, is uh, tactical urbanism. That is an uh, unconventional approach to the design of spaces presenting critical issues or awaiting a permanent destination. The tactical urbanism primary concepts are self-construction of a public space by local, promotion of uh, street public use, promotion of a collective and a public city use, promotion of a network of uh, association or company. Uh, we are bound to a specific territory, Emilia Romagna. We recognize associations and small local realities as a fundamental part of the urban project. We were trying to create a network or synergy between them. Our projects focus on the theme of social and environmental and um, sustainable, sustainability. <laughs> the project we are sharing today uh, launched at the beginning of 2020 and promoted by the Fessina Factory Foundation. Focuses uh, on the hills of Bologna, a green islands close to the historic center that are more or less enhanced and scarcely connected to the, each other, where it lacks uh, an overall vision and promotion to coordinate transversely all the existing excellences and peculiarities. peculiarities. We are going through a moment of a crisis under various points of view, health, climate, culture, and economic crisis. This historical moment is uh, fundamental to diffuse new practices and establish new conditions and opportunities for life and development. We started from this reflection to intuit that the hills of Bologna, so close to the historical center, embraced by the urbanized layout of Casalecchio and Rastignano. So abundant in public green areas, receptive activities, architectural emergencies, geological, botanical, and uh, naturalistic peculiarities, culture and didactic, uh, didactic activities can be better valorized by systematizing the single existing realities. We want to create a network of local actors that promote the experimentation experimentation of small modification of the temporary and highly communicative public space. Able to improve the quality and usability of the spaces themselves through intervention to mobility, enhancement of green areas 
and micro events and coordinated communication. We hope that in the future, the hills of Bologna will become a real car-free park. During our journey, we faced several obstacles, like the vastness of the area, difficulty in develop, developing a business plan, and lack of uh, financial funds. The division of the area into private and public property, shared goals without common strategies. For the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, we would like to open a debate among local actors and learn from other international practices. I am finished. Thank you very much. What? Okay. Thank you, Irene. Thank you very much for your presentation. Okay. You. What a interesting regeneration project you have and an ambition proposal no a great opportunity for bologna it's it's very impressive thank you very much okay so we're going now fast to the last part of the session today now that we know a little bit of each of the scenarios we're going to go to this closing activity all together and we're going to virtually travel with our digital technician and Natasha to the Miro platform. Natasha, we are ready, I think, if everyone is allowed, Natasha, to take the controls and take us to the Miro on this uh, virtual traveling. Hello. Hello, Natasha. Hi. I'm going to put myself in the spotlight as I have done with every one of you. Okay. I hope you're all in speaking of you so now I can appear like really, really huge images of me in your screens, on your screens. So what we're going to do now is uh, we are going to introduce ourselves to, to the Bureau platform. Maybe some of you already know it, maybe some of you already have an account. Uh, I'm going to pass a link and uh, fortunately, you will be all able to enter without any problem and you will see the cursors of Aurora and of mine uh, moving around the, the platform. It is also possible that uh, it, uh, the platform starts to ask you to log in. Don't have any fear and log in. I'm also going to share my screen. Oh, many courses around already. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also suggest that you will lower your microphones now with them so we can all talk. Yeah, open microphone uh, workshop. Oh, here it is. So uh, as you can see, I will call you all. There's a there's a very cute um, there's a very cute uh, thing you can do in Miro. Uh, bring everyone to me, so everyone will come to me now. Supposedly, where I am. You're moving like crazy. I hope anyone has had any problems on getting in the platform. No. no. Chat. Bye, everyone. I have to leave now. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, you can all come. I don't know if you can see my cursor uh, because I had a problem with that anyway. You should go in the center of the circle, the central circle, where EU Urban Rights Universal Declaration, um, or you can see the screen I'm sharing also. So as you can see here are um, here are the the material we use today to do the presentation. Miro is a very good material in order to do this kind of presentations. I'm now using the presentation mode and I can move to uh, the series of um, to the the list of frames I have already 
prepared here so I can do my presentation here, but also have everything organized in, a, in, in one platform. Uh, we actually use a lot of this uh, program and we uh, are proposing this tool in order to organize your, um, your future parliaments, your future digital uh, parliaments. The, this is an optional tool, okay? Um, you can try to navigate. We will do a, a very, very simple thing here so that uh, we can see how it works. Um, but there is one thing that I think Aurora can talk later on uh, better about is that we need from you. Uh, you can go on and make an account. You uh, have already, we will pass this link by email or we, can, we will make an official um, invitation so that you can all enter to this, uh, to this board and uh, edit it. You have uh, the right to edit now. So you can try moving things or maybe you can't because everything is locked. So you can't move uh, almost anything. Um, but uh, we are going to use this tool in order to register all the activities that are gonna take part uh, in the future parliaments. Uh, we will have more sessions on this, so we're gonna explain it uh, later, but we're gonna do a very, very small thing today to just familiarize ourselves with the platform. So uh, if, you can, uh, if you can see, like here in the middle, it's the information about today. We will complete the presentations with um, the small legend uh, here so that you can get more information on where are the websites of each one of the of the previous um of the previous um urban rights sessions and this is like this is like the thing of the this platform it's a, it's it's an alive platform it's a thing that continuously continually changing and it's a platform that we can all see each other i think it's uh, it's always very interesting when you see like other cursors of people like being there it's like being there but uh, see people moving and creating things. So um, we're going to do this very, very, very simple thing now. We should all come. I will call you back again where I am. Big everyone to me. So um, here where the URE opening circle. As you can see, there are all the there are circles around the, the, the big circle that is all recognize um, represent uh, each one of the uh, seven or eight parliaments that are going to take part. Uh, this year. So today we are on the uh, opening session, obviously. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, as you can see around this circle, there are small logos of each one of your uh, parliaments. Right above the URU opening, there are some small post-its. You can see by various colors. The first thing I want you to do is take the post-it that has your name on it and put it next to your uh, logo like I am doing right here with the black one. It's a very, it's a quite simple uh, program. It's very Adobe oriented. So you just click and drag. Okay, as you're all doing this, remember when um, <laughs> this is uh, every time this is this is very funny every time when cursors are moving like that. Remember how Luiso asked you to take notes during the presentations of uh, the other ambassadors? Well, now it's the time to see if you had all your ears uh, in the presentation. In the presentations, um, is anybody having problems? Berlin has nailed it. Berlin has done exactly what Berlin everyone should, uh, should do. <laughs> should be doing it. Just, it's, no, don't move Very the opening logo. No. Opening logo? No. I'm going to lock it. <laughs> you just do as Berlin did. You take your post-it and you move it next to your, uh, to your logo. Outside this big circle, there are, uh, you can find your logos. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Ah, mm. very well. I lost my logo. <laughs> <laughs> really, eh? Your, your logo is down at the left. Look, I'm testing it. I lost you... my post-it. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm gonna give you one. Wait, wait. Uh, yeah, Aurora will give you one. Stop zooming, we'll get bigger, bigger. attack. Bigger, bigger. 
Uh, yes, wait, wait, wait. Where are you? Here. Okay, so have... Morph Morphe did it. Mer Thank Merlin you. did it. <laughs> Bologna did it. <laughs> okay, almost there. Bologna did it. Okay, and who else? We can do it for the rest of them, but anyway. Hmm. Ah, because we have three Bologna people here. Yeah, no, Earth, for example, Spratia. yeah. And the, the digital edition uh, had lived. One of those. Ah. Yeah, Arries and Digital Embassy. Yeah, Arries and Digital Embassy have left. They have, have to left. Leave. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. under under Werpen, I don't know how to pronounce the city. Amberes. 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 This is this is uh, much easier. So uh, now that we all did that, what ha what's happening to what happened to the discussion? <laughs> it's already a qu question. Sorry, I can delete it again. Yeah. So the thing is that now that you that each one of you has a post-it and each one of you has its color, uh, the thing is that we will go through each embassy. I will zoom in. Uh, mm -hmm. We will start from Bologna, because, only because it's the first one here. This uh, rectangle was, uh, as you can see here, Morphe. Um, they were good students and uh, sent us very early the, um, the response to the, um, the PDF. <laughs> so we had time to put it here. The other ones that we received, uh, we did not have time to put it there. So maybe it's a good option that you can learn in the future to do the copy paste, uh, very, the very complex, um, this very complex thing, the control C, control V, but it's no, you don't have to do it now. So this is the place when you will, where you will put in the, um, uh, the introduce yourself template. But now, uh, please, each of you, take your post-it or make a copy of it with control C, control V, or right click, copy, and then paste. And let's go to Bologna. So each one of you with your post-it and your color of the post-it, you can also generate a new post-it from here, and you should you, you should just choose the, the color of your embassy. You take your post-it, you put it here, and you write the things that you were thinking about during the presentations about um, about the Bologna embassy. And when we are finished, we will move on to the next one. This is just a simple exercise in order to give feedback one to another and familiarize a bit with uh, with the Miro platform. I will stay here with the. Um, with uh, sharing my screen, but you can choose uh, 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 rather staying here or being in the Miro platform. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, Natasha, one question. Mm. I, I don't understand. I have to put my template there. Or if you if you have it, yes. Like an image, no? Yes. Okay. Yes. You you can drag and drop, or okay. you can you can copy paste. Uh, yeah. A PDF uh, two or, or yeah. PDF two. You can drag and drop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Natasha, which image do we have to drop? Do you have uh, the, the introduce yourself template already here? If you didn't feel it, it's okay. Yeah. Oh. Look, like this ah, one. that one. Yeah. yeah. If you can. But now, I don't know if you see my share screen. We're all in, uh, in Bologna leaving, um, leaving comments. Hmm. Uh, Alfredo, you have a good one. Maybe I can, you can copy paste it to Antwerp. <laughs> <laughs> if you want. Change the colors a bit. My template is your template. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guest moralist that has lost itself himself here or herself. So supposedly you can all enter later on on the um, on the mirror platform and see what did uh, everyone else um
What has anyone else already think about? Okay, if we are done with Bologna, now we can move on to the next one, which is a digital one, and we can keep uh, going on like this. It's one just leaving at least one comment with a post-it. No. Meanwhile, I think Aurora wants to uh, make a suggestion. Anyone oh. has any, any difficulties with, uh, with the platform? I think it's quite easy. Um, Natasha, such as everyone, I'm the bad guy, bad news guy. We have uh, two more minutes to finish uh, our meeting and I still have a big announcement to do. Um, okay, we can leave five minutes more in order to complete that. Okay. No, I think we, we did an excellent job today with, with the time. <laughs> yeah. We deserve five more minutes. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> Just five, yeah. You got it. Mm. Uh, one one question. Uh, in the post it there are some some question. No? Um, um how we can answer with another post it See, or you can comment it now, I think. Okay. While, while other people keep putting post-its. Mm -hmm. What was the question, Alberto, uh, Alfredo? No, no, no. I, th I, I have to I think about it, but uh. <laughs> uh, there are some, I, I mean, there is some question that I, I just want to know how to answer now with the, another post to document it or mm -hmm. uh, yeah. talking or it's free or mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that's uh, interesting. The... Write it. No? <laughs> yeah, I think you can write the answer, but uh, in order to start the dialogue, which will be the most interesting thing, okay. uh, we didn't uh, think that a dialogue could be generated, but this could be the, the best thing. The actual purpose is uh, to have uh, the feed, to have feedback from everyone, and. Mm -hmm have it like in a place uh, collected. Also the post-it like gives it this, um, this like uh, very uh, first time meeting aesthetics. So it's all like, ah, this, well, then when we will, we will be looking at this table some months from now, we'll be like, ah, look, this was our first post-it. And look <laughs> at us now. <laughs> yeah. But also one of the main points of the whole thing of this encounter is to to put everyone in in relation. So we are starting now um, a Telegram channel, and we encourage you to subscribe to the web page in order to have everyone in relation. So it also depends on the way, on the kind of dialogue or which kind of information, for example, they are asking you. The idea is that the project will uh, infrastructure the way you can establish dialogues from now on. Totally, this was our first uh, interaction between the embassies. Live is uh, something we kind of prototype but uh, this is uh, something that we are going to keep on doing now. This is the only the starting point of everyone interacting with the ideas and the propositions and the questions of everyone. 
and uh, being part of all the other uh, parliaments. Um, I'm gonna share while we, we finish this. I'm gonna share a couple of links in the through the chat. It's the the mirror link, the wiki one. I think if you want to use it, it's perfect for the project. But also you can wait for the for the digital embassy session where we are gonna learn how to really use it. There is a Telegram channel in, if you want to get in touch with us or with other ambassadors, you can use this Telegram chat. And you have the web page. So as Alfonso was saying, you can subscribe there and be in touch with the newsletter. Guys, I have a question. How many uh, parliaments of urban rights uh, have been happening during the last years? During the last years? 15, I think. More you or less. have organized 15 parliaments, no? 15 more editions. On each edition, maybe there were more than one parliament. I see, because the one that they got, uh, you presented, they were the ones that they were distinctive, like by, different from each other. The first one, the last one, and, and one that it's uh, based on this iterative idea of repeating one thing a lot of, thi a lot of times in order to learn from each other. Yeah, but for example, one of the biggest editions of this project is, for example, in Berlin. The Berlin edition was held in 2016, I think. And there were a lot of different sessions and it was really interesting, as you know. <laughs> yes, to be honest, I didn't know a lot of Berlin. I checked it in the website, but I was, I was wondering hmm. when it was inside the, the presentation. Hmm. Well, the idea also is uh, in this project to, to be able to explain the experience of each ambassador in each place. Well, in order to, to, to share the lessons learned from each of them, because each, each one is different. different. For example, some, some, some of them were <laughs> held inside <laughs> cultural institutions, for example, as the Berlin one. Or, well, Janice, where uh, in a rural context and in a completely different, well, with a different, completely different scope. And it's more like a methodology used in a, a specific context. context. And probably we're going to fill this, uh, this space in the middle board with uh, presentations and other editions. That's nice. For me, it's like, um, it's also interesting. I'm, I'm not sure, but since we are not so, at least in Team Love, like we try to do some, some kind of discussion through the community, but it's, it's I mean, it, it would be nice if we can, if we can share with us also some yeah, tools yeah, yeah, yeah. and the sure. format. Yeah. Maybe if there is any format in the path that we can like do. <laughs> Um, um I think uh, I think we could we could use also uh, because uh, like Christina is doing like this uh, a lot of questions I think that uh, um, the previous experience of the of the urban rights sessions that uh, most of the Thulark members have uh, it's like a huge library of things that is impossible to put, to put in 15 minutes of uh, presentations in any case I think we can use the the Sorry, the posted, um, the posted thing, in order not just to give feedback to the people around, to, to the people I mean around the circle, to the embassies, but also give feedback, uh, ask questions, put some of your post-its inside the circle of the EU uh, uh, opening, in order to ask questions about things that uh, you think that we could especially like consult 
uh, like the things you are thinking about, like I'm thinking about doing the embassy this way. How can you consult me? Or do you have any expert, any former experience uh, relative to that, that it could be great use of me? And I think it would be nice that these questions were open in common so that not just the Stilwark members that have a lot of experience in that uh, can reply, but also since sure. this will be an open platform for everyone, uh, be able to uh, visit it once in a while and uh, be able to give more feedback. This is like a, an example of what's going on now. But I think some of the more, a lot of the questions that Christina did now, they could go like uh, as post-its inside here. The good thing about Mira is that it's, it's, not, it's not dying, it's gonna be there. And uh, it would be nice to have like this, time, this type of um, um, inter, inter, uh, interrelation with each other. But it will be very useful for us also to know what are the things that mostly, that you mostly care about and, and knowing. So, Natasha, Aurora, I think is a uh, time for me to close the parliament. Uh, I don't know if everyone is ready. One more minute. Or. Just well, while you were finishing, just want to finish this parliament, giving you the announcement of the next parliament. As uh, Alfonso was saying, we, we will have the next parliamentary session on the 22 of October. It will be the Digital Embassy Parliament and we are going to be uh, familiarizing with all that uh, we just started here, how to interact with each other, how to be part of the process of the others, and how to use all these digital tools for collaborating uh, with, uh, virtually with all the different projects. So we will give you all the information and everything about it. Uh, you, are you are kindly invited, but a bit obligated to be on this uh, parliament because we're going to make a, 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 a small workshop on how to use all these technologies. And it's very easy, such as the one that uh, uh, Natasha just did, but uh, with some other very interesting tools. So, uh, on the 22 of October, save the date, please. And uh, that's it. This is the end of our first uh, plenary session. Thank you so much for everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you on the if anyone wants to say something, here is the time. I am going to make just this uh, act of closing, but you can rest here. The picture. Thank you very much. Oh, we used, uh, I already take so many pictures and since there's some people that already left, left but okay. yeah, let's make a last picture. Yeah, that was the last thing to do before I'm leaving. Everybody smile, please. We're going to do a screenshot. Um, Thank you very much, all of you for being there till so late. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Guys. See you soon. See you soon. <laughs>
Recording. Eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo paramos el, el si, si cierro, mira, no. puedo hacer eh, poner arriba, los... arriba de tener grabación. Puedo poner stop recording, ¿no?